and we're back with another Pico CTF challenge. Reverse engineering crack me dash pi. So the description is just a file to download, so we'll do so. We'll open it up in VS Code, and we will get our terminal as well. And we're going to run this first just to see what it does out of the box. Crack me dot pi. What's your first number? I think 12 is a great number, 22 is a great number. The number with the largest positive magnitude is 22. Uh, okay, it's not wrong, but it's not very helpful. So let's begin to read what we have in this uh, file. I think this is really important. Uh, doing an obscure piece of code is brilliant and it's encrypted. We want our biggest client to know his information is safe with us. Bezos's credit card secret is how I'm reading that, Jeff Bezos's credit card information. Then we have an alphabet, which looks to be a whole bunch of characters that are allowed, upper and lowercase numbers, we have a function, decode secret, that we'll look at in a minute. Right now we're just doing high level stuff. And another function called choose greatest. And that is what we're calling by default when we run the script. And choose greatest takes two inputs. And then it does some comparisons to see which one is greater and it prints it out. So this is absolutely useless. But we're not interested in this. That's just a red herring. What we're probably interested in is decode secret, which says it's rot 47, so rotate 47. Encode and decode are the same operation in the rot cipher family. Okay, so let's try running this. And uh, let's see, decode secret, Bezos credit card, and we want to print the result of that. Actually, I'll do this on the command line rather than an ID. And there's a flag. So since this was such a short one, Let's talk quickly about ROT47 and what this is doing. And the best way to do that, I think, is to debug into it and run it in the IDE. And then we can observe the state, we can observe all the variables, and we can talk about what's going on. So we've passed in our secret, which we can see here, which is Bezos' credit card information. We have this constant. We're going to rotate by 47. And we're creating a string called decoded. Decoded will hold all the characters as we decode them. Then for each element of the secret, we're going to find where it is in the alphabet. So let's add one more thing. We'll watch the alphabet. And if we look at it, so we're trying to find what C is. C is uppercase A, and we want to know where in the alphabet is that. And it's there. It's about 30 something in. So let's see what the answer is. Index is 32 into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the index and the rotate constant, so rot 47, and we are going to take the remainder of that using the modulus operator, which we'll talk about in a minute. The modulus operator over the length of alphabet. And what's the length of alphabet? It's 94, which you might notice is twice 47. Two times 47 is 94. And that's important. That's why applying the, uh, the same operation, as they note here, sorry, encode and decode are the same operation. That's why they're the same. We'll get into that in more details in just a second. So we're going to rotate by 47, and then we're going to add that into the decoded variable. And we're going to look up what that value is in the alphabet. And we can see it's a P. So let's, let's do a few more quickly. Now we've got an I, we've got a C, we're spelling out Pico CTF. All right, great. So why does that work? Why is uh, rotating by 47 twice, uh, what does that reverse the operation? Why can you just run encode and end up with the same value as uh, boy, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this. Why can you run the encrypt function once to actually encrypt it, and then again to decrypt it? Well, because it's all based on uh, modulo arithmetic, or clock math. So as a quick example, here in this beautiful grandfather clock, we're at 6 o'clock right now. If you were to add 6, you would end up at, at midnight or noon, depending. So you end up at 12. If you add another 6, you go all the way back to 6 o'clock. You, you don't just continue counting up. You, you don't count 18, 24, 30, 36, uh, 42. You're getting the remainder. And the remainder in this space is modulo 12 because you can only go up to 12 and anything beyond that. So 15, for example, just becomes three because you have one full 12 and then you have a remainder of three. So what we have with ROT47 is we have 94 spots. So imagine a clock with 94 places and then let's say the original value is one and we apply 47 uh, rotations to it, or we, we move 47 spaces. So we rotate halfway around this clock 
Now it's encoded. Now to decode it, we just apply another 47 uh, spaces to it in this clock space, and we end up at the exact same spot we were at. Hopefully that makes sense. If it does, please like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.